correct? So I could say, um, I'm going to do it formally, but is it necessary? No, I'm just doing it, you know, so that you understand the rule. Um, I could call selecting a hard to be event A, followed by a club without replacement, event B. Do you believe that event B depends on event A? Yes, so they are dependent events. So if I have to write this, I would write it as probability of A multiplied by probability of B given A. That is the notation. So probability of a heart multiplied by the probability of a club given a heart in the first try. So now we should be able to understand multiplication rule, hopefully, under dependence, because the second event depends on the first event, which is selecting a heart. So when we write B given A, we're not saying we're not dividing, we're not doing anything. All we are saying is B is affected by A. So of the two probabilities, one of them is a conditional probability. Which one is it? Of the two probabilities, one of them is a conditional probability. Which one is it? The second one. What is that? You can't be the right answer. You should know. Because it depends on the first one. It is conditioned on what happened in the first trial. So, what is the probability of selecting a heart the first time? In total, you have 52 cards. Out of those 52, how many favor a heart? 13. Next time you pick, it is going to go down to 51 because you picked a card already and you're not replacing it back, and you want to know the probability of getting a club. There are 13 clubs, so 13. So your final answer would be 13 divided by 2, so 4, which is... Oh. How'd you get to 0, 4 again? 31 times 4. Oh, yeah, you right. Of course. <laughs> 0. 0.06. Wait, where did you get the 4? But I do appreciate your vote of confidence. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Are we clear? Yes. Two adults. I'll call it adults one, adult two. And it is without replacement. In a problem like this, if you cannot visualize, it's always best to draw it out. So, I'll just put it as yes and no. So, at yes group, they think that celebrities are good role models. No, they think that they're not good role models. So, we have 200 here, 800 there. In total, we have 1,000. Good. And it is done without replacement. So the probability that a person, a randomly chosen adult from that sample would like, or excuse me, would think that celebrities are good role models would be 200 out of the thousand that you have. So but we're doing but we're doing it without replacement. So once you pick a person out of the survey at random, what would the total number be? 999. However, or what happened to this count? That count went down also. It went down by one because I already picked an adult who thinks celebrities are good role models. 
So 200 is going to go down to 199. But when you multiply the two, what do you get? So there is a 3.98 percent chance that you pick two adults at random without replacement that both of them would think that celebrities are good role models. Good. Does it make sense to from a practical standpoint? Why? Three percent of people do think celebrities are good role models. You are interpreting that talent, but based on the sample that we have, does that conclusion make sense? Why? Because out of a thousand people, one or two hundred people. Okay, thank you. So out of a thousand people, the majority think that celebrities are not good role models. So if I pick two people and I want to know, well, what are the chances that both think that they are good role models, celebrities are good role models, it's not going to be a high percentage. It has to be low, and it is. So in most cases, probability problems you can stop and think of it and recognize whether your answer is going to be correct or not. Even before you start the problem, based on the scenario that's provided to us, should I expect a bigger probability that is close to one or something that's close to zero? Close to, close to one. The reasoning goes back to what Talon said, you know, 800, majority of them think that they're not all models. So same, we have two adults. And neither of them thinks that celebrities are good role models. So, what is the probability that the first person thinks that celebrities are not good role models? So, out of these two, we're, we're going to look at that total. So, 800 over 1000. I picked one out, which would mean the total de decreases by one, it becomes 799. And what would happen to that 800? It'll go down also. Sorry, I have it backwards. 999, 799. So when you multiply the two, what do you get? 63. Nine eight. Nine eight. I round it up. Take four decimals always. You can round the fourth decimal digits by four decimals always. So this problem goes back to something that I mentioned in three point one, I believe, when I did properties of probability. I wrote one rule. I wrote one rule, and that rule is complementary rule. And I said, even though the rule is trivial, it will play a significant role in difficult problems. So if you forget the rule and you just, you know, just go with this, what does at least one mean? Keep in mind, exactly one and at least one are not the same thing. If I say exactly one, it means exactly one out of two. At least would mean one. Oh. Yes. So I'm going to erase this. We do have that one. So at least one would mean one or more. And I have two adults. Now, 
Now, they are distinct individuals, do you? But you can't pick the same dog twice because it's without a taste. So at least one would mean one or more. So either the first one said that celebrities are good role models. The second one said, no, they're not. Yes. Or another possibility, the first one doesn't think that celebrities are good role models. The second one does. Are we done yet? No. no. What is the next outcome? They both think that celebrities are good role models. Yes. So what is the probability? Well, and what should we do? We have to add these because we have three probabilities and they can happen um, separately. This is a good lead, lead in to section 3.3, which is additional. Um, there, we will talk about disjoint events. In other words, if one event happens, the others cannot happen. So, if I said that this happened, could I also say those two happened? No. If I took this as the potential outcome, could the other two happen simultaneously? Yes, no. No. If I went with this, the other two cannot happen. So they're all disjoined, so we find the probabilities and add them. So this could have 800 over 1,000. 1,000 becomes 999. But what is the numerator? Sorry, backwards. Doesn't matter. Do um, how many say no? 800. In this case, it's just the reverse of that. So you would have 1,000. 800 people said no. 200 over 999. The last case, both of them say yes. 800 over 1,000. Sorry, thank you. 200 out of 1,000. 199 out of 999. And we have to add all the probabilities to get the answer. This is great and all, but what if you had five adults instead of two, and I asked you, well, what is the probability at least one of them uh, thinks that celebrities are good for models? That would be a lot of adding, correct? So you keep all, you have to write every single possible outcome. Now, there are ways to do this easily. That's in section 3.4. I omitted that section because it's not needed for this class, in my opinion. But if you're interested, look into it. If you have questions, I'll be more than happy to uh, explain that to you. So this approach of writing things out, not that great. You could use the concepts in 3.4. Since I didn't teach you that, there has to be another rule. That rule is simply The complementary. What does it say? It states that if A is an event and AC is its complement, then probability of A would be 1 minus the probability of its complement. What is the complement of at least 1? Neither. Huh? Neither. Neither. Very good. So, right? Very good. So, neither, or easier way to remember would be no.
none of the two thinks that celebrities are good role models. In other words, neither of them think that celebrities are good role models. That answer we have already from the previous part, yes, which is 0.6398. So if you subtract it, you get 0.3602, which is 36.02%. Does that make sense though? Again, it is a small probability. It's only 36%. And I'm saying at least one. Does it make sense? If I said exactly one, that would be a small probability. But I'm saying at least one, so either one of them, or both of them. So that probability has to be slightly higher than I'm saying exactly one. Does that make sense? So this is a very important rule. As I mentioned, if I had five adults and I asked you, well, what is the probability that at least one of them um, thinks that celebrities are good role models? Talon said that would be a lot of addition, lots of outcomes. So here we can skip that and use the rule. It is easy to find the probability that none of them thinks that celebrities are good role models. How many outcomes are possible, even if I had five of them? None of them. When I say none, how many possibilities do I have? Here I had three. If I have five adults and none of them thought celebrities are good role models. How many possibilities would I have? One. Exactly one. Sarah, right? Casey. Casey, okay. That's one bitten, second one bitten, third one bitten, fourth one bitten, first one bitten. And there is no addition involved. It's just one single probability. And the process is the same, you just multiply the probabilities to get the final answer. If you still don't understand this, I explain or suggest and recommend students to do this, but of course they don't draw zero, one tick, right? One or more would be that A. Everything that A is not would be its complement, correct? What is its complement? Zero. At least one. No. Do you see it now? So keep this process in mind because Drawing this out later on will help you doing problems in chapter five. So get used to it. I would recommend it again, but I hope you use it. 